Red Meets Red has officially surpassed Animated Monorail as my most streamed song across all platforms. So naturally, here we are with How I Made It. This is the project file that I started with. And the main thing that I started with in this particular song was the bass. And these were just some layered 808s that I put together maybe, I don't know, from like a Cymatics pack and maybe a KBZ pack or something. Just layered them. I thought those were sounding good. And I added the kick and snare. Super simple. Um, just laid that down. And then the thing that really, I think, brought this track to life that I added next were the percussions. All right, so as you can hear, I mean, I was really liking those. It was giving it a really fun and interesting bounce. And what those really are, are, let's see, it's this sonar blip. I did a little, that little tuck 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 was a um, paper towel roll. And then, I don't know, just some basic little trap snare hits here and there. And then I had a, an open hat and some tap dancing that I put together in this loop. And then all of them together. And then I added this portal um, pre. I added this portal preset called Decimated Space, that really gave it this sort of this cool um, stereo energy and this grimy texture. I love that. I just threw some EQ and um, just to help it out a bit. This one I think is just removing a unpleasant frequency. And then all these perks together were starting to sound sort of Middle Eastern-y. Give this very Middle Eastern sort of vibe. And then finally I put on this melody here. And that just had to be some bells or something that I took from. I think I took from a Cymatics pack and just um, just did some tweaking with them. And then the whole thing sounded like this. And that's how this thing was originally sounding, right? I just went out and kind of developed the arrangement a bit and... Over at this part is where it got the name from. So I came up with this sort of um, fluty melody. And what that is, it, I just stacked a couple of instruments that were like stock instruments from Logic. You got the Japanese Koto and the Indian flute there. And I thought those sounds worked really well together. Um, it gave it sort of this Middle Eastern vibe, but at the same time, sort of a, an Oriental spice or flavor. And then went back into this. And so that was the whole thing. And with that, I kind of, I just on the spot named it Osama. Not Osama, like the infamous Middle Eastern terrorist, but... It just happens to be coincidence that the track had a sort of Middle Eastern flavor. But no, I named it Osama, as in, like, king or emperor is how you would refer to a king or emperor in Japanese, like in the ancient Japanese times. Because I was feeling that, uh, that Japanese koto, the oriental feels, you know, it, it was giving me those sort of vibes and Osama happened Osama bin Laden obviously happens to be uh the an infamous uh 
Middle Eastern terrorist. So um, <laughs> that's obviously what most people associated the track name as, and it was poor thinking in hindsight. So after I made the beat, I decided to shop it around on that STL vs. Everybody. <laughs> That producer showcase it's that youtube channel um radio station that i told you about that's on my previous video about how i made animated monorail and um from there i dropped it on this beat pack that i put out summer 2020 and so after the beat pack drops nobody hit me up for the beat but i decided to keep it because i knew that it had potential after like shopping it I showed it around to a few people and some people mentioned like Cardi B, Megan Thee Stallion being on it. Which is kind of funny because that was before WAP came out. Although I could hear that, I wanted to take it in a different direction. Um, I think it was September and so um, Halloween was around the corner and I wanted to do something hard. I've been listening to Xanakin for a while and was impressed with what he was doing. So I hit up his inbox with some beats and I requested a feat. After listening to him, he got back to me and said he liked Osama, and, but he wanted it sped up. And so I listened to it like that and I agreed like, oh shit, this sounds way better sped up. So um, I gave him the sped up version and he got back to me. I think it was a turnaround of like two days or something like that. He came, he hit me back with the lyrics and everything and, and I was super impressed with that. I knew that the rest of my job was going to be super easy. I was having second thoughts about dropping it on October Halloween piss. because if I did that it was really going to be one of my first releases and I hadn't really, I had like 150 maybe um, followers on Instagram and like I didn't have a very big following. I still don't have a very big following, but I had an even smaller following then. And so I felt it'd be doing an injustice to Zanakin because uh, I wanted to kind of help bring more attention to him because I think that he's, he's a, such a great artist and the things that he does, like he really deserves it. And so I, I felt like I wouldn't really be doing my part by releasing it when I don't have any fans to kind of turn on to him too so um i decided to wait on to postpone his release till december in the meantime instead i would drop timelines in october and timelines was i had that track all ready to go and it kind of fit my overall image better than red meets red does. because like the trap medley stuff isn't like the only thing that I do and it's not the only thing that I want to be known for so I didn't want people who were the first people to discover me to think that that's what that's the only thing I'm all about actually the trappy metal -y stuff that harder stuff is something that I really love but it's part of it's actually a different part of me that releases that a different identity so I dropped that in October in the meantime and decided to wait until December to release Red Meets Red. When December eventually rolled around, I brought the project out again to do some overhauling. So I got the vocals back from Zan. And it was already sounding great, and he suggested maybe like lengthening the 808s or whatever, but I already knew exactly what I needed to do. Um... And I did exactly that. I started with the 808s first and really wanted to make some thick, some thick and fat, beefy bass. And for these, it was really all about just finding the right um, 808 samples to stack and then automating um, some noise and glide and just being you know really specific with those and over here on the processing this is what they sound like without the processing so, so I added some sausage fat to really beef them up and to give it some low end I added an ozone imager to really rein in the stereo information 
make it more mono. I then added an additional compressor to help rein in the dynamics because they were dipping a bit towards the, uh, um, on some of these later 808s. So I just wanted that to help balance out the overall levels. And then I added another ozone imager to really help um, get some specific stereo information going on here. I wanted anything above 150, well, anything below 150 to be super mono, and anything above 150 to have a little, like the slightest bit of stereo information. So it wasn't completely mono. And the last thing I did was I added this saturator over here. It really just gave it um, its character and really helped spice up some of the low mids. And that was that for the 808. Then I just wanted to thicken up the claps and just, you know, worked on layering those a bit. Just wanted a beefier clap. Um, I didn't change much else instrument-wise, but um, did some changes to the arrangement to make it complement the vocals and to keep it interesting throughout. So after this first sort of chorus is what I called it, but whatever, after this, I wanted this first um, sort of drop into the verse to be something fun. Right? So this part right here is a little part that I came up with. So that was supposed to be in keeping in line with the sort of original feel and title of O-sama, meaning Japanese emperor. I was imagining Zan as this like outer space lord who was coming to Japan to bed and wed his empress or something. <laughs> and um, he was being greeted by one of the temple maidens there or whatever. And so that's basically what this was. It was just a vocal recording that I actually paid for on Fiverr. I just asked a um, voiceover artist to do exactly that. Oh yeah, and I had this, I had this Rick and Morty think clip here as a placeholder for something funny i just knew i wanted something funny there but uh it didn't really fit with the rest of the track so that's why it was just a placeholder but you might recognize this clip i don't know what humans eat you know what this human eats don't be gross tammy <laughs> tammy gross <laughs> other than that i really just wanted to focus on um keeping the track interesting and evolving and so it really comes down to these details, like uh, here the I slowly automate in the 808 distortion so that it um, slowly kind of creeps in. See how it just kind of creeps back in there? And then... Um, you know, I changed up the melody instrumentation here for a bit. Instead of that normal bell instrument, I just used like a, uh, it's just a little patch I made in Serum. Really simple, but it just helped keep it interesting and different here and there. Little things like that I just sprinkled throughout. And basically that was it. So when it came down to naming the track, again, I'm not the best guy coming up with names. I threw some ideas back and forth with Zan. Um, we eventually settled on Ren Beats Red because I had the idea, um, you think of Darth Vader and the Sith and shit, you think of Red. And when you think of my character, Candid Fiend, you also think of Red. So, Red meets Red, the two of us meeting. It was as simple as that. Originally, we talked about it being a collaborative release, you know, Xanakin and Tonic. 
but uh, Zan was dropping so many things at that time and had so many other like things that he was featured on and everything that he didn't want to confuse people and we decided it'd be easier just to release it as uh, Tonic and have him be a feat. That was that. Um, I got the artwork drawn up, little Vegeta Nappa inspo, and then I dropped the track on December. Christmas Day, actually. Since then, people really liked it. Uh, Cam from Cuff Boys reacted to it, and it got a lot of positive feedback. It obviously blew up a lot more once it got shown on Vibes Forever. Strife was really helpful with building up the song. So it got on Vibes Forever, which is dope. I communicated with Strife a lot over that period of time um, because he, he was really against uploading it as anything other than Zanakin Skywalk prod by Tonic Dream. Because the YouTube algorithm is stupid. The, I don't know if you've noticed, but when you try to search for my name in YouTube, my name doesn't even come up. In fact, the first channel that comes up is Some Other Tonic Dream. I don't know who that is, but he's earning subscribers off of me, man. The, in order to get to my channel, you have to click on one of my videos and then click the channel link, which is just stupid. So we knew that finding any video for Tonic Dream was going to be near impossible for people so he suggested you know doing it Zanakin because he's obviously much more searchable which I understood but Zanakin didn't want to do that because he didn't want to confuse people and thinking that that was a new release from him which I also felt the same way about um, we agreed on that and we wanted to stick with the way that I had decided to originally release it. Strife eventually decided that he would upload it the way that we requested, which is crazy because he cert he didn't have to do that, but I'm incredibly and eternally grateful for him for doing that because that's just, it just means a lot to me. The thing is with it being uploaded as Tonic Dream, um, featuring Zanakin, obviously with my, my very modest audience, it's not going to garner the sort of viewership that neither Vibes in Strife or Zanakin really deserve. I mean, obviously the two of them and Vibes' team uh, deserve a lot more recognition than what I can bring, but I made a promise to them that I would keep putting out heat and just keep putting out great music and growing my brand and hopefully one day it'll pay off for all of us. That's why it means so much to us as artists when you guys, you know, stream our music and follow us, leave likes on our videos and all that stuff. Like it seems so menial, but it goes much farther than you know. Seeing comments of like people telling me to keep going and keep, um, keep making great beats and having those sort of expectations from me really helps encourage me to do that and to keep um, to really step up my game, you know? With that said, you know, thank you so much for showing love to, to, uh, Red Meets Red and to the other tracks that I've released and to what I'm doing. I mean, it just, it means the world to me. Um, and for helping encourage me to keep going and to keep doing what I'm doing, I will make the same promise to you that I made to them. I will just continue to make great music and to put it out there and you guys can let me know if it sucks if I'm doing something wrong I'm gonna do something you guys like I want to make things that you guys want to hear and I will do my best to not let you down I got some projects in the works right now that I think you're gonna be happy about so hang on till then see ya